And this is the famous Sand Strip at Daytona Beach, Florida, where Barney Oldfield and many other race drivers made racing history. You're looking at the beach from our camera in the Goodyear blimp, and we are close enough to actually see the blimp from the speedway, so we're not very far from where stock car racing was born and where the tradition now is being carried on at the new $3 million Daytona International Speedway. Today, cars will be going around here in speeds of excess of 160 miles an hour. There's no speed limit today for the Daytona 500. And that's the kind of action you'll see today in this, the world's richest late model stock car championship race, the Daytona 500. And you'll see it on ABC's Wide World of Sports. From the Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's the 1963 running of the Daytona 500. Today, more than a half a million dollars of brand new automobiles will be competing, and some of the world's top drivers will be going after a pot of gold that is in excess of $120,000. Hello everybody, this is Bill Fleming welcoming you once again to the Daytona International Speedway and today we should see one whale of an automobile race. The weather should be a factor. Uh, they have an axiom here in February in Florida, if you don't like the weather, stick around five minutes, you'll get a change. It's been changeable all uh, prior to the race time. It's uh, been gusting up to 40 miles an hour and I think maybe Chris Economaki, our trackside expert, the editor of National Speed Sport News, might have a comment on the weather here today. Chris? That's right, Bill. Two important factors here in the pits today, the wind and gas consumption. The wind is going to push those drivers down the backstretch at speeds faster than they want to go. They're going to have to lift in the turns. And because of the high speeds turned in by these 1963 model cars, the gas consumption is higher than expected. And it may mean some of the star drivers will have to make an extra stop. It's normally a four-stop race. Today, we may see some of the top stars making five. This could be disastrous. And now, back to you, Bill Fleming. All right, Chris, we'll be checking with you, of course, during the progress of the race. Uh, never before have we seen such tremendous enthusiasm for an automobile race. People anxious to see whether the Fords and the Pontiacs will be battling it out or whether the Mercury might make a run at them, or the Plymouth, or the Chrysler. And that's the reason we have a tremendous crowd on hand here today to watch the running of this race. And here's the man who'll be sitting in the pole position in a 63 Pontiac, Glenn Fireball Roberts, hometown favorite, who won this race a year ago, who knows the track as well as any driver in the world. Freddie Lorenzen outside in the first row in a 63 Ford, driving car number 28. Dan Gurney driving in a 63 Ford, one of the top Grand Prix International race drivers, competing in his first Daytona 500. Here's young Dick Petty, car number 43, a 63 Plymouth. He was runner-up last year in this race. A rookie at Daytona, former USAC sprint car champion in a 63 Chevy, Johnny Rutherford. Joe Weatherly, 41 years old, a veteran driver, NASCAR Grand National Champion in 62. And here is A.J. Foyt, winner of the Indianapolis 561. He'll be in a 63 Pontiac today. Here's Tiny Lund. Tiny is in this car today that was assigned to Marvin Panch. Tiny pulled Panch out of a flaming wreckage and in reward for his courage, was given this mount today. He's the heaviest man at 270. And here's Bobby Johns, one of the lightest men at about 120 pounds, driving a 63 Pontiac. A few moments ago, I mentioned that rain was in the air. Well, as you can see there on the windshield of Nelson Stacy's car, it's definitely coming down now. The Weather Bureau says a squall line has developed just northwest of here with heavy rain, so we may have a delayed start. Here's the situation at Daytona Beach. It has stopped raining. The cars were sent out to start the race under the yellow caution flag. And that is the first time, to our knowledge, that any race has been started under the yellow flag. And it was done for a very good reason, to dry out the track. We had a tremendous amount of rain, but as you can see, the track is dry. And although the cars are still under the caution flag, it won't be more than another lap or so. And we'll have the green flag out. The pace lap, uh, the pace car is still out there leading these cars around. And we now have 49 cars in the race. 50 were slated to start. However, car number 62, the 62 Mercury, driven by Kurt Kreider, uh, had to drop off because of a faulty cooling system. He had uh, a little uh, problem in the qualifying, and he was uh, banged into the front end. And they couldn't uh, complete the repairs in time, or at least sufficiently, to get him out there and running with these hot cars. Lots of 
drivers to watch. Of course, Fireball Robertson, Freddie Lorenzen, in that front row. Johnny Rutherford holds the one-lap record of 166-plus miles per hour. Paul Goldsmith in a hot car. Rex Wyatt and G.C. Spencer in those hot 63 Chevys. And Tiny Lund in Marv Manch's 63 Ford. In all today, we've got 22 Pontiacs, 15 Fords, 7 Mercuries, 7 Chevys, 6 Plymouths, 3 Dodges, and one Chrysler in the starting field. And there you see Fireball Robertson, Freddie Lorenzen. The pole position on the inside and outside of the first row. Car number three is Junior Johnson, and car number 13 is Johnny Rutherford. Car 01 is Paul Goldsmith, and outside of him is Rex White. And now the starter has the green flag out, and this will be the last lap under the caution light at the start of this race. These laps are counted in the 200 laps on the 500 miles, and off they go. The green flag is out, and there you see the paper flying up as the drivers pour the coal to it as they go in to the official green flag start. And taking the lead immediately is Junior Johnson in the 63 Chevy. Look at him go. And hanging right on behind him is Paul Goldsmith in the 63 Pontiac. These uh, Chevys have shown incredible speed here all during speed weeks at the Daytona National Speedway. And it was expected that they would go right to the fore as soon as they got the green flag. And there goes Junior Johnson as Paul Goldsmith is hooked onto him. And he was the only one able to get the draft. The other cars are back, as you can see, considerably. But Goldsmith hanging right on there. Junior Johnson in third place is A.J. Foyt in a 63 Pontiac. Fireball Roberts, car number 22, is in fourth. Freddie Lorenzen in a 63 Ford is in fifth place. Larry Frank is in sixth. Rex White, seventh. And Johnny Rutherford, car number 13, is now in eighth place. And they're really moving now. The track thoroughly dried out. Although you can see some water there, you can get an idea of how much rain we actually had. It's a perfectly dry and safe track right now. And look at Junior Johnson move. You know, Saturday is a big day for sports over most of these ABC television stations. Challenge Golf leads off, followed by Professional Bowlers Tour and ABC's Wide World of Sports. And on Saturday nights, it's the fight of the week. And make that spare. Well, right now, it's Junior Johnson in the lead in the 63 Chevy and Paul Goldsmith right behind him. What a battle we're having here now in the early stages of the race. The question, of course, will be, how can they keep up the pace? And in the pits this afternoon, perhaps we'll be told the story of this 63 running of the Daytona 500. And Junior Johnson flashes by with Goldsmith right on his tail in the suction of that first car. And they have a good lead over the rest of the field. Junior Johnson is still setting the pace in car number three, and Paul Goldsmith is still right behind him, and we've got a great battle going on for third place right now. A.J. Foyt, Fireball Roberts, Rex White, all in there, battling for spot number three. But Junior Johnson and Paul Goldsmith have the lead at this particular spot. 63 Chevy and a 63 Pontiac out in front. And we have been getting some very fast speeds. During the first 10 laps, under the caution light, they were running just about 91 miles an hour. But since that time, they've been up around 160. And here is car number three, Junior Johnson, is coming into the pits. And of course, this will mean a new leader. Here comes Junior Johnson in for an unscheduled pit stop. So apparently, he's got some trouble. 
And we have the new leader, Paul Goldsmith, has streaked into the lead in the 63 Pontiac as Junior Johnson has come into the pit area. We're trying to find out. Uh, the only word we have, Chris Economaki, has gone over to try to find out, and he's uh, pointed down to underneath the engine, so apparently it's something wrong underneath the hood, and that could mean trouble for Junior Johnson, a hard luck guy from Rhonda, North Carolina. And again, that battle continues. There's 0-2. That's A.J. Foyt. Fireball Roberts is in car number 22. And number four is Rex White. Those are the cars that are now battling for second place as Paul Goldsmith has taken over the lead. A.J. Foyt in second place. Fireball Roberts is on the outside. Car number 22 and Rex White on the inside. Boy, they're bunched in there very close together. Chasing Paul Goldsmith at this particular time. Well, a little bit earlier, Chris had pointed out that the... Uh, these cars, with this tremendous pace, might have some mechanical problems, and there you've already seen it. And there was a car you perhaps saw smoking as it went by, so we may have more dropouts. And here comes one into the pits right now. We'll put the glasses on him. This looks like Paul Goldsmith coming into the pits, and if it is, we're, we're going to have a, a new leader at this point. Let's catch him. It's a 63 Pontiac. It is Paul Goldsmith is coming into the pit area. So there is another unscheduled pit stop. And Goldsmith is coming in. So just in the last two laps, we've lost the first and second place cars. And it means that A.J. Foyt has now taken over the lead. So let's watch very closely. Chris, if you're close by, let's get on this one of Goldsmith. See what happens. They're in car number 01 with uh, the Ray Nichols pit crew. Paul Goldsmith sitting contently. The right rear tire and the right front tire are actually smoking. This is the first time we've ever seen that here at the Daytona International Speedway. However, the tires are not being changed. It is strictly a refueling stop, and they're telling him to put oil in. It looks as though they're going to add oil. No? Nope, the hood goes back up again. The oil has to be added. Goldsmith wanted oil. They're being talked to. He's the most uh, calm man in the automobile, as this crucial pit stop is taking an extra long time because of the addition of oil to this 1963 Pontiac. Okay, well, unofficially, uh, Chris, we got him in there for 61 seconds, and that is very precious time in this race because they're running laps in under a minute right now, so that, you can figure, at least cost him one lap in addition to the speed-up time and getting out. And, of course, we might mention that whenever they're putting oil in an engine, it could be kind of bad news. He may have some uh, wearing of the ring. Something there is wrong. So we have a new leader, A.J. Foyd, in 0-2, you saw him flash by. Rex White in the 63 Chevy has uh, taken over second place. Dick Petty in car number 43, the 63 Plymouth, has moved into third place. And G.C. Spencer, who is uh, really the twin car to Junior Johnson, the 63 Chevy, has moved into fourth. So A.J. Foyd, who is a former Indianapolis winner, is getting a real battle for first place. There's Rex White next to him, and moving up very fast is G.C. Spencer in car 03. Look at him go. Well, that's the kind of acceleration that they said these Chevys had, and uh, he shows it right here as he takes the lead on the inside. Foyt is just on his tail in the dark-colored car, and here comes Spencer. This is the first time that G.C. Spencer has uh, really had uh, a top-rated car. He's uh, had uh, older model cars during his racing career, but he's got a hot one today. Rex White hanging right in there, right behind him, and Foyt is battling White for second place. And we've got our timer now on the lead car, G.C. Spencer. Now, you can figure that if it takes about 54, 55 seconds, they're running better at 163 miles an hour, around two and a half miles of track. back stretch they go. G.C. Spencer in the lead and he is getting a pretty good challenge here and Rex White is going to take the lead. Rex White and A.J. Foyt in the draft moves right by. Very nice piece of driving by A.J. Foyt who moves right in behind Rex White and we still have our timer on G.C. Spencer so it'll give you a rough idea of uh, how fast these leaders are moving. Johnny Rutherford holds the one lap record 166.161 miles an hour. Set in the qualifying runs. Here they come. Very close to the finish line now. 55 seconds flat. And on our speed chart, unofficially, 163.63 miles per hour for G.C. Spencer on that particular lap. But he has lost the lead, and it's been jockeying back and forth. As 
we've had four different leaders, and now Johnny Rutherford is in the pits, and Chris Okonomaki going close there to see what's happened to this popular favorite. Well, Johnny Rutherford, car 13, is in the pits. He's not running in the first five at the moment. He's getting a cool drink of water. It's strictly a routine stop with refueling and a windshield cleaning job being the only work that's taking place on this black and gold number 13, a very quick stop. And back to you, topside, Bill Fleming. Okay, that cost him sixth place in the standings. And as you know, those pit stops are very important. And uh, Freddie Lorenzen commented on the pit stops a little bit earlier. Let's listen to what he had to say. Pit stops will be, I think, the biggest part of the race. Uh, the people that have to change tires more than once, I think, will be in worse shape than ones that maybe can go all the way. And pit stops, if you're in here 40 or 45 seconds, or if you can be fueled and tired in 20 seconds, you're in good shape. I think that's going to be the main part of the race in the pits. A driver who thinks the race can be won or lost in the pits, Freddie Lorenzen. All right, A.J. Foyt still battling up there for the lead with Rex Wyatt and G.C. Spencer. And these three cars have been jockeying back and forth, each taking a shot at it. We've had six different leaders now in the race, and it gives you a rough idea of how closely competitive these cars are. Here's Rex White in the lead, and look at the challenge he's getting from Spencer. Blows him right off as Spencer takes the lead once again. It's been seesawing back and forth during the early part of this race, and already we've had some mechanical problems with some of the cars at these tremendous speeds in excess of 160 miles an hour. They may not have a record here today because of the first 10 laps being under the caution light. But I'll tell you this, they've never run faster in the 500. We'll be back with more action in the Daytona 500 from the Daytona International Speedway on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We'll be having more action here from the Daytona 500 in just a couple of minutes. Right now, let's switch our scenery a little bit to Wanalancet, New Hampshire, for the New England Invitational Sled Dog Race. And Jim McKay. Thank you, Jim. Here we are back at the Daytona 500, where action is fast and furious out on the track. And now as we move toward the 80-lap mark, we are moving toward the second scheduled pit stop, and what a battle we've got. We've got seven cars in there that potentially could take the lead at any instant in this race. Low on the inside is A.J. Foyt, and on the outside is G.C. Spencer. Spencer in a 63 Chevy, Foyt in a 63 Pontiac, and the fans are really eating this one up because as they root for their favorite model cars, they've got a good shot at all of them. The Chevys, the Pontiacs, and the Fords, all in there. Right now, Spencer in the Chevy, in the lead. Foyt in the Pontiac in second place, Larry Frank in a Ford, and Freddie Lorenzen, car number 28 in a Ford, also in there very close. Fireball Roberts in the Pontiac. Boy, they have been bunched in a little cluster like this for practically the entire race since the early going. And as far as the early going was concerned, uh, two of our early leaders have dropped out. Paul Goldsmith in a 63 Pontiac uh, went out of the 39th lap. He had a broken piston ring. If you recall, earlier he stopped for oil, and that was one of the reasons it was pumping oil on him, and finally she cut loose, and he is out of the race. Junior Johnson, who won this race in 1960, is out with engine trouble, so that early pace killed off two of the early leaders, and here are the seven cars, six of them right here bunched in a row, that you see Spencer, Foyt, Johns, Frank, Lorenzen, and Jarrett running right in there, and they are jockeying back and forth. We've had a dozen lead changes. We've had six different leaders so far. 
Boy, it's really been a blistering pace, 144.362 miles an hour for the first 70 laps. And that is tremendous when you realize they ran the first 10 laps under the caution light. And there you see Spencer and A.J. Foyt running fender to fender and Bobby Johns on the outside. And now we've got four of them abreast as Freddie Lorenzen and Larry Frank move into the lead. Look at that. Four cars were right abreast, the four leaders, and then all of a sudden, just like a shell burst, Freddie Lorenzen and Larry Frank zoomed in, caught the draft, and Lorenzen has taken the lead by a brilliant piece of driving going in on the inside. So Lorenzen in there, and Larry Frank drafting him, and they're leaving the other ones behind, so we've got two 63 Fords who have taken over the lead and broken G.C. Spencer's hold on it there for some time, and also A.J. Foyt's. They have dropped back. And now pit area activity starting to increase considerably as uh, these cars will be coming in for their second scheduled pit stop and therein lies a very important element in this race. In fact, uh, coming into the pit area right now is car number 15 pulling into the apron and uh, it's into the pit area right now. Chris? Cornelli Jones come in with a flat right rear tire sliding to a stop as Bill Strump and his Mercury pit crew crawl all over it for a change of tires here and routine refueling. He is the fastest driver on the Mercury team and in today's race, Cornelli Jones, the man who broke the 150 mile an hour barrier at in Indianapolis. And there's that absolutely shredded tire being picked up now and dragged behind its red hot. He had to drop it. The crewman had to drop the tire. It's too hot to handle there by the rear corner of the car. The work is done. The gas cap is being put on and away he goes. Back to you, Bill Fleming. Okay, and a good pit stop by Barnelli Jones crew, Bill Strop, the chief mechanic on that one. And uh, right now, Freddie Lorenzen is getting a real chase as Freddie has been holding on to the lead. Bobby Johns and Larry Frank, everybody making a run at him. But car number 11, Ned Jarrett, is making his move. Look at Jarrett move in there. So Lorenzen and Jarrett and uh, Larry Frank all in 63 Fords. And look at them bunched up in there close. These cars are running four, five, six feet apart at tremendous speeds right now. So Lorenzo in the lead, and we'll try to get a clocking here on uh, just how fast he's going. Remember, if he does it in 55 seconds, he's doing about 163 miles an hour. Freddie, very popular, a bachelor, handsome young fellow, formerly from Elmhurst, Illinois, and now calls Charlotte, North Carolina, his home. Very popular, naturally, among the Bobby Sox set at the track and uh, really wanting to win this 500 here today. Incidentally, we uh, just got a note that uh, Larry Frank, running in uh, car 06, is not in second place because he was penalized for pulling into the wrong pit area earlier. So really, right now, although Frank does not know this, uh, he is running back in the back, and Ned Jarrett in car number 11 is running second. So there you have the two 63 Fords, Lorenzen and Jarrett, and in 54 seconds, that roughly gives him, well, unofficially, almost 166 miles an hour. And here comes Fireball Roberts into the pits. Fireball running in that pack. Uh, staying right up there within four, five, or six all the time. He's coming into the pit area. And uh, Chris, if you can give us a quick word on him. Chris Kanamaki. Okay, here's the leader, Fireball Roberts. In the pits now. Boy, I think Banjo Matthews is crew chief working furiously there. He's getting oil in addition to gasoline. They're leaving Fireball all alone. He's chewing gum very placidly, very contentedly in the pits. He knows he's doing well as a defending champion in this 500 today with a car that was not given a chance in the pre-race bookings. Okay, Bill Fleming. All right, and uh, Fireball rolls up the window and we've got him out in 34.2 seconds, a very fine pit stop. A little bit earlier, Chris talked to Fireball about his chances in this 63 running of the 500, and here's what he had to say about it. Sterling Moss of American stock car racing, the uncrowned champion of the stock car tracks, a man who has won every major race in the country, Glenn Fireball Roberts, a hometown driver who is a defending 500 champion, but who is going into the 500 today with a car that is admittedly not as fast as the others and is down on horsepower. Glenn, his ability and strategy a substitute for a deficiency in horsepower? Well, partly, uh, Chris. We're going to 
try to play the drafts and I have a very fine pit crew which is a big part of it also and I think that my car probably has a staying power a little more reliability than maybe some of the faster cars and I I'm not beat yet in this race worse from a champion he's not beat yet Okay, and here is Freddie Lorenzen uh, pulling into the pit area right now, which means we're going to have a new leader. It would mean that Bobby Johns will be taking over the lead at this point in car 7A. And there's Jared in there very close. So Freddie Lorenzen getting a drink of water. And uh, Chris, if you can make a comment here about Lorenzen and how he's, how he's doing. He's had a drink. He's waiting for the last second of gas to go in. Remarkable work on the part of the pit crews, finishing the tire change before the fueling. And there he goes. Okay, take it upstairs, Bill Fleming. An excellent pit stop by Fred Lorenzen, and one that means a great deal at this point because uh, Bobby Johns has taken over the lead, but Bobby's going to have to make a pit stop. And here he comes, right in right now, on the apron. Bobby Johns coming in to the pit area. Chris, if you can get down there quickly, let's get the story on him because uh, he has now lost the lead. Jared has moved in. Let's see how quickly he can get out of this pit. Bobby Johns in the pits, making a very slow entry. His father, crew chief here, swarming all over the car. It looked for a while like he may have run out of gas. So Papa Johns is running around. We're very excited here. Now they're going to open the hood on this number 7A Pontiac. Johns was the leader up until the time he moved into the pits for this routine pit stop. But the hood is up. And this means difficulties under the hood. The air cleaner is being taken off the car. He needs a pair of pliers to lift the air cleaner. And now they've run into problems, important, time-consuming problems, on this Pontiac number 7A with Bobby Johns. As soon as the gasoline is through going in the back, then the pit becomes overlong. They're pouring gasoline. They're pouring gasoline, and the car's on fire. The car's on fire. It's fire there. His father's on fire. Now, the fire extinguishers come into the pits here. Bobby John's father's hands caught fire. He poured gasoline under the hood. The fire's been extinguished, and it looks as though this may be the end. His father's hands are badly burned, and they've got to button the hood down, and he goes away. Okay, Bill Fleming, take it away. Okay, Chris, a few very anxious moments there, and they're still trying to get that hood buttoned down. Bobby anxious to get out of that, but now they got the uh, bolt in, and he's off and away, but it cost him well over a minute. So Ned Jarrett has moved into the lead, and Freddie Lorenz is also in there battling for the lead at this point. We'll be back with more action in the Daytona 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Now, here's a word from Liberty Mutual Insurance, the company that stands by you. are really dominating things right now at this point in the race. Uh, they are now in the top three spots with uh, Jarrett, Lorenzen, and Stacy holding those three spots down. Fireball Roberts in a 63 Pontiac is fourth. Then uh, the Tiny Lund in a 63 Ford is fifth. So the Fords now have four of the first five places. We have about 80 laps to go, and that means two more pit stops. And at these speeds, anything can happen.
We'll be back with more exciting action from the Daytona 500 a little later on. Right now, let's switch our scenery somewhat to Juana Lentz at New Hampshire and the New England Invitational Sled Dog Race. And Jim McKay. Thank you, Jim. Here we are back at the Daytona 500 where action is fast and furious out on the track. And you can see just how fast and furious it is. These cars are only four feet apart. Freddie Lorenzen and Ned Jarrett running one and two right now, those 63 Fords. And they have about a 10 and a half second lead on the third and fourth place cars. And there you see him, Fireball Roberts is in uh, number three spot right now, car number 22, and Tiny Lund is right behind him in car number 21. And uh, right now we have three Fords in the top four cars. And we have the last scheduled pit stops coming up very shortly. 27 cars still running in this race. And that means that we've had 22 of them drop out, actually 23 since uh, Kurt Kreider also started the race. Paul Goldsmith, Junior Johnson, Jimmy Herdebees, A.J. Foyt, Len Sutton, all out with mechanical trouble. And Bobby Johns is doing a great job despite that fire in the pit. He's still in there in seventh place right now. So the pit stops are going to be the critical portion of this race right now as the cars move into the final 45 laps. And we'll see who's going to pit first. Here's a car slowing down. And it is Freddie Lorenzen who will be coming into the pits. So, Chris, get on this one because this is a very important pit stop. Freddie Lorenzen coming in. He's got 43 laps to run. That's uh, just under 110 miles to go. So Lorenzen will come in and get fuel and try to get out quickly. We'll time his stop. Chris? seconds and that could be very critical because actually uh, Jarrett and Lund, here comes Jarrett, we'll time his, uh, Jarrett and Lund could conceivably take on fuel faster than Lorenzen took on fuel and oil. So let's see, now uh, Jarrett uh, moving into the pit area and now uh, another car coming in and this will be Tiny Lund. Tiny Lund will have 40 laps to go so he's almost run a perfect race. Uh, that would be 100 miles on a 22-gallon tank of gas. Uh, Chris? And here's Tiny Lund, the fellow who got this ride for his heroic efforts as pulling Marvin Panch out of his burning sports car, was named to drive the car as Panch is being uh, recovering. Tiny Lund doing a great job in front of a 21, waiting for his service. He's the leader. He inherited the lead when Lorenzo and Jared stopped, and he's trying to hang on to it now with the pit stop, getting close to the half Oh, there is a tremendous uh, pit stop, Chris, of Tiny Lund, 26 and 9 tenths seconds. We were timing Jared unofficially, and he had 36 seconds. And Lorenzen had 38.1, so there is your leader right now, Tiny Lund, with a brilliant job by his pit crew. And uh, these two will be following him. That's Freddie Lorenzen and Ned Jarrett, but your leader, Tiny Lund, is ahead of them. And he will have a good three seconds on him as he flashes by. There you see him right there. We'll have more action from the Daytona 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. And now a word about neat hair from Vitalis.
Well, it now becomes a question of fuel. Freddie Lorenzen is out in front in car number 28, a 63 Ford, but he's getting a real challenge from Tiny London, Ned Jarrett. Those three cars have been running on the same lap, and the question would be, can they go the rest of the way with the fuel they've got in their tanks? Fred Lorenzen out there in front, and this may be by design. It may be the tiny Lund wants him to get out there. It takes more fuel to break the wind. And Lund, staying in the suction of that car, actually could conserve a little bit of fuel. At this point in the race, the tires are wearing, the fuel running low, and the driver's getting tired, and this is where things are really tough. The last 15 laps of any race, and particularly at the speeds that we've had here today. And now, Lund is making his move. Oh, there is car number 22 on the back stretch, and that is Fireball Roberts, and he is going to be through for the day. Fireball Roberts, who won this race a year ago, at a record-setting pace, he is out of the race today. Something has happened to his engine. There you can see the car smoking very badly, and he has blown his engine in that 63 Pontiac, and a tough break for him. So, Tiny Lund now trying to take Freddy Lorenzo on the outside, and he's got him. And I'm sure that the pit crew of Freddie Lorenzen is very anxious now of whether Freddie can go all the way. And if, if uh, Chris Economaki, he can get a word with uh, Johnny Holm the crew chief, uh, we'd like to hear whether he thinks he can make it. Uh, Chris? This is Johnny Holman, entering of Freddie Lorenzen's car. John, uh, Freddie stopped with 108 miles to go for gas. Everyone says you can only get 100 miles to a tank full. Will he make it? Yes, he will, because we get about 112 miles to a tank full of fuel. You got a cushion. We have a slight cushion. And your words from the chief mechanic, Johnny Holman. Well, Johnny, you may have a cushion, uh, a slight one, but it's not a very comfortable one at this point. It's a real gamble, and I'm sure that there's a tremendous amount of tension, perhaps even a few fingernails on that pit wall area as we get down to the last moments of this race. Tiny Lund has regained the lead. Freddie Lorenzen drafting him now, and Jared is in third. The Ford's running one, two, and three. In fact, they're running one, two, three, four, and five because Nelson Stacy and Dan Gurney in Fords are one lap behind. And uh, then Dick Petty in a 63 Plymouth is running six. So he has broken the uh, grip of the Fords, but uh, they still have one through five at this point. Bobby Johns doing a great job after that unfortunate pit fire he is now in seventh place, and he is driving a Pontiac, and Joe Weatherly in eighth place also in a Pontiac. And look how close Lorenzen is on Tiny Lund. Tiny at 265 pounder, who has never really won the big one, hoping today that he can drive this car that Marv Pants was slated to drive to victory. You know, some outstanding events are coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We'll take you to Sebring, Florida for the 12-hour Grand Prix of Endurance, to Kent, Ohio for the NCAA Wrestling Championships, and to Aintree, England for the Grand National Steeplechase. These top events scheduled for future weeks on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Boy, we've got a dandy going here today at Daytona Beach, Florida. The 63 running of the 500, and it couldn't be a closer race. We've had the lead change at least 25 times during the course of the afternoon. We've had a dozen different leaders. We've had some of the top cars drop out of the race. But right now, with Fireball Roberts out of it, it's a three-car race. Tiny Lund, Fred Lorenzen, and Ned Jarrett. And it's a toss-up right at this point. Any one of these cars is capable of taking over the lead. If the tires hold out, if the fuel holds out, if the drivers don't make any mistakes, any one of those three cars could go in there at the last second and grab the lead at the finish line. So this could be one of the closest races of all time here at Daytona. And some 70,000 fans really eating this one up. We'll be back for the exciting conclusion of the Daytona 500 from Daytona Beach, Florida in just a moment on ABC's Wide World of Sports. And now here's a word from Liberty Mutual Insurance, the company that stands by you.
it's still a three-car race as Freddie Lorenzen, Ned Jarrett, and Tiny Lunn continue this bumper-to-bumper -bumper drafting as we go in to the final laps of the Daytona 500. Boy, it's just impossible to tell at this point which one of these three cars could win the race. Fuel, tires, and of course driver fatigue all entering into the final moments of any race. And it is extremely important here now to see whether these cars can go the distance for the rest of the way. There's uh, Freddie Lorenzen dropping down a little bit on the inside, and I think he's coming. He is coming in. Lorenzen is coming into the pit area. Ned Jarrett has taken over the lead. Tiny Lund is in second place. And Chris, if you're close by, Lorenzen is in your area. He's coming in, and I'm sure, for fuel. Chris? Okay, uh, Chris, and of course that's the thought that everybody has right now. Can Jarrett and Lund go the rest of the way? That cost Freddie Lorenzen about 30 seconds in there, now, although it only took him a little over 10 seconds uh, unofficially to get that fuel. Of course, slowing down and then getting back up to speed cost him. There you see Bobby Johns going up a uh, high, apparently in the lead, but he is two laps behind Lund and Jarrett at this point. So those two cars, the lead cars, are absolutely nose to nose, fender to fender, wheel to wheel, photo what have you, but there's not more than a half a car lane ever separating these two cars as they jockey back and forth for position. Ned Jarrett in the lead right now, former Grand National NASCAR champion in 1961, and Tiny Lund, who's never won the big one, who's been in racing for 18 years, and who still has uh, to win that great big pot of gold. And here's Lorenzen. Still trying to pick up some ground, putting his foot into it, but he's got too much ground to make up. He's hoping that somebody's going to falter here in front of him. But the leaders, here they are, Jarrett and Lund, have a good half a lap on Fred Lorenzen at this point. And there is Jarrett dropping down. Jarrett has dropped down, and I think he's coming into the pit area. Tiny Lund has shot into the lead, and here comes Jarrett. Chris? Chris Agonimaki, if you're there, here is Here's Jarrett. Jarrett. The second gasoline victim coming in with car number 11 for just a few points of gas with only three laps to go. Then Jarrett has to give up to fight for the lead to get a few precious drops of fuel in this number 11 Ford, leaving it to Tiny Lund of Highland, Iowa, in car 21, out in front. There, they've given him just enough. About 10 seconds worth, and away he goes. Take it, Bill Fleming. Okay, officially eight and four tenth seconds, but slowing down and picking up speed again has cost him about 25 seconds. So Tiny Lund, a fellow who didn't even have a car here two weeks ago, is in the lead, and he could very well wrap things up in one of the richest stock car races of all time, the Daytona 500. And here he is, Tiny Lund, and he'll be starting on the last lap. So Tiny Lund is out there all alone, and unofficially I've got him 24 seconds ahead of Freddie Lorenzen, and he's got a good 30 seconds on Ned Jarrett. Don't want to overlook the fact that Nelson Stacy is fourth and Dan Gurney is fifth. They're two laps behind. And then uh, Dick Petty in the 63 Plymouth is in sixth place. Bobby Johns doing a great job is in seventh in the 63 Pontiac. And then Joe Weatherly is in eighth. But here's the guy that everybody has been chasing, Tiny Lund. He's driven a tremendous race. And you can bet that if he can just finish now, his pit crew will get a tremendous amount of credit for the job of engineering they did here today. The checkered flag is out. And here he comes. Under the checkered flag, Tiny Lund has taken it. And this really is a big victory for him. And in just a moment, we'll be back with him in the winner's circle at the Daytona 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. And Chris Economaki fighting his way through down there to get to Tiny Lund and uh, his wife, Ruth. Chris? Tiny, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Congratulations. Here's your 
wife over here looks so elated. Tiny, you've just won $25,000. What will you folks do with it? Pay your bill. <laughs> Pay your bill and add to our fishing camp. I know you have a fishing camp yes. in Cross South Carolina. Tiny, you've been racing more than half your life. You got married at a racetrack, didn't you? Yes, sir. 18 years I've been racing. And this is probably your biggest day. Biggest, very biggest. Well, congratulations to a wonderful couple, Mr. and Mrs. Tiny Lund, formerly of Holland, Iowa, now living in Cross South Carolina, and the turbulence in victory lane for two great people. Relax. I, I was out of gas for the last four laps. You were out of gas when you took the checkered flag? Yes, sir. Out of gas, taking the checkered flag. Words from a winner, Tiny Lund. All right, thank you very much, Chris, and our congratulations to Tiny Lund. A word here about a tremendous job in the pit crew area for Tiny Lund today. A perfectly planned race. He only stopped four times in that one big stop, 26.9 seconds in the pit, literally won the race for him today. And so they must be very, very happy tonight. Also very happy, the Ford Motor Company, because numbers one, two, three, four, and five were all Fords today. Tiny Lund, Freddie Lorenzen, Ned Jarrett, Nelson Stacy, and Dan Gurney. The average speed, 151.566 miles per hour. Very fast, considering we did have a rain-delayed start. Our thanks to Mrs. Milton Seeley of the New England Sled Dog Club and to William G. France and William C. France of the Daytona International Speedway and to the officials of NASCAR. Executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Today's program produced by Dick Kirchner. Directed by Mac Hemian. Associate Director, Ronald Hawkins. Daytona Technical Director, William Morris. In one Lancet, William Dagenhart. Technical Supervisors, Pat DeStassi and Joe DeBonis. Assistant to the Executive Producer, Jim Spence. Technical Pickup by ABC New York. Timing Device, courtesy of the General Indicator Corporation, Blimp Shot, courtesy Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Remember next week, it's the Men's AAU Swimming and Diving Championships from New Haven, Connecticut. This is Bill Fleming speaking for Jim McKay and Chris Economaki saying so long from Daytona. Today's program was recorded on videotape from Daytona, Florida and One Lancet, New Hampshire.